And then, of course, there was an older Dryas. You know, that's why you have a younger dry. If you didn't have an older dryas, there wouldn't be a younger dryas. It would just be the dryas, right? Right. And that's dryas, not dry ass. Okay. Okay. When was the older dryas? Uh, I think it was sort of like around 15. I think, let me see. Let's. I think if I go back, I think I even have it on a on a graph here. Uh, yeah, go back to slide number eight. You'll see that you've got an oldest Dryas, an older Dryas, and then a younger Dryas. Okay, I see it now. Yeah. And the oldest Dryas and the older Dryas, they were not as cold as the younger Dryas. And notice the younger Dryas ends at 11,500 years ago, right? Right. Now, that as that graph moves up, that's warming. See, temperature in degrees centigrade over on the left. Mm -hmm. So you can see that the climate dropped in temperature, very, very cold. Um, and then it rose again. And this graph, it's dated at about 11,500 years ago. And there was a warming, a massive warming. That massive warming would have been associated with huge floods from melting ice and a rapid rise in sea level. Now, 11,500, interestingly and coincidentally, going back to the thing we mentioned earlier, geomythology. In Plato's accounts of Atlantis, his two dialogues, uh, Timaeus and Critias, mm -hmm. where he talks about Atlantis, he, he dates it as 9,000 years prior to Solon's exile in Egypt, which took place roughly at 600, 500 to 600 BC. Okay. So that puts it at, say, 25 to 2,600 years ago. Add that to 9,000 years, and what do you get? 11,500 for the destruction of Atlantis by a great earthquake that caused it to sink beneath the Atlantic Ocean. Coincidence? Wow. Yeah. No, I think that uh, Plato was... Nailed. See, this is where, you know, modern academia just dismisses the whole Atlantis account. As right, being, right. You think of Atlantis, you think of some fictional woo-woo tale. Yeah. In, well, it's only in books. Right. But if you go back to the source, I mean, the source is Plato, mm -hmm. the greatest metaphysician of, you know... Right, but the big Western question, civilization. The big question is: Was it a moral tale, or was it a physical place? Was it a real city? I think it could be both. Why? Why would not an ancient commentator utilize an actual historic event? Right. Upon doesn't, which to graft a, a moral teaching. Doesn't Plato recount in his writings that it? Doesn't he say more than once that it was an actual real place? Oh yeah, multiple times. Yeah, he, he affirms the veracity of the account. Mm -hmm. says this this may have the appearance of myth, but it's real. It really happened. He says that, yeah. So, um, so which brings us to the recent video of the guy who was just on Joe Rogan's podcast who talks about... Jimmy. Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy. What's the name of his channel again? Bright Insight. Bright Insight, yeah. So he had a conversation with Joe Rogan mm -hmm. about the Eye of Africa right. being the location of Atlantis. Mm -hmm. um, can you Do you have that little video clip that I showed you earlier, Austin, where he talks about, he shows the map, uh, Plato's map of Atlantis and where it could be and why he lays out all of his reasoning on why that could be the location. No, I didn't know Plato had a map, so I'm not... I could be wrong. Maybe it wasn't Plato's map. This, this is somebody's map. Though. Let's watch this quick clip real quick. Okay, let me. They described an empire named Atlantis, which consisted of ten kingdoms, and the capital of Atlantis was on an island that consisted of three rings of water and two of land. Which, of course, <clears throat> when we look at the Rishat structure, you see that it would precisely match that specific detail of three rings of water and two of land, and. Not only that, it was said to open to the sea at the south, which is exactly what you see here at the Rishot. In fact, you can literally see the striations in the sand where water once flowed through it. But not only that, those white blemishes are indeed salt. An unbelievably significant detail, which I'll discuss more of in a moment. But Atlantis was also said to have mountains to the north. Mountains that were said to have rivers run through them, which, yes, there are mountains with evidence of ancient water flow north of the Rishot. Atlantis was also said to be surrounded by a large plain, which also exists for hundreds of miles on both sides of the Rishot structure. 
Another striking similarity is that Atlantis was said to consist of black, red, and white colored stone, which is incredibly interesting when you see all the stones of that color in and around the region of the Rishat. There was also said to be an abundance of elephants, and elephants live in Mauritania today and have for thousands of years. In fact, there's an even ancient cave art depicting elephants not far from the Rishat. And Atlantis was also said to have an abundance of exotic fruit and vegetables, which makes the case for it being in North Africa even more compelling, considering that we now know that the Sahara Desert what, didn't even exist until somewhere around 11,600 years ago, where it went from green to desert in practically an instant. But many people are not aware of this incredible fact that the Sahara had previously been a lush, green, tropical paradise at the same time that Atlantis was said to exist. In fact, it was said to be made up of the largest freshwater lakes and rivers ever known to exist anywhere on Earth, which of course would support that the region of the Western Sahara would have naturally growing fruits and vegetables. But alleged vegetation that no longer exists in this region aside, Atlantis was said to have an abundance of metals, including iron, copper, and gold. Well, it turns out that Mauritania's most common exports today include iron, copper, and gold. But the simil similarities do not end here. You see, Atlantis was said to be created by the god Poseidon, and Poseidon had ten children that came from five sets of male twins. And each of these ten children would individually be ruler of the ten kingdoms that made up the empire of Atlantis. And the firstborn would rule the capital, and his name was Atlas. So does anyone want to guess who the name of the first king of Mauritania was? King Atlas, who ruled over the Mori people, which is why the land is called Mauritania today. And not only that, the vast mountain region located north of the Rishat just so happens to be named the Atlas Mountains. What a coincidence. Now, another incredible detail involves this map. This is the map I was referring to. This is considered by many to be the father of history due to his extensive historical documentation. In fact, we wouldn't even know about the Greco-Persian Wars if it wasn't for him. And some 2,500 years ago, he made a written detailed account of the known world at that time. However, he himself did not draw out this map. Others, and I do not know who or when, read through his various works and annotated that the people of Atlantis lived in this region you see here, which just so happens to be the same general location of the Rishat structure. What are the odds? All right, you can stop that? it there, Austin. The very same place. Okay, very. So he lays out a very compelling, uh, he, he sells it. He sells yeah, it. Uh, yeah, and, and generally, you know, I, I like his stuff. He does a great job. Um, we would disagree on this. <laughs> For, Let's go. <laughs> well, listen, I have done uh, an entire treatment. Of this. this is episode nine of Cosmographia. Right, which was, which was very and, compelling. And, and that follows upon, what, six or seven episodes, about 10 to 12 hours. Right. Going into the Atlantis account of Plato, mm -hmm. the background. You know, all the stuff he's talking about there. And, and, and it's good stuff, man. I Yeah. Um, but I have some issues with it, and I... I get into that mm -hmm. um where why i believe it's not there and you'll need to watch that danny and then okay. we can talk about that we could do an atlantis episode when i come back okay